What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the show. Okay, I have a good video to show you guys today. And the YouTuber I'm gonna show you, his name is Mr. Beat. And he he talks about political history. He has a very, very good channel. And uh, please, I after you watch my video, go over to his channel, subscribe to his channel, hit his little bell notification so you get notified. I think he posts a video every Friday. And this video is 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 good. Now I knew he was doing live streams before. I've been watching his channel for for some time now. And basically what he did is he called every US senator. And he sums it up in this 15 minute uh, video that we're going to show right now. And I'm 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 going to talk a little bit as we as we watch it, but I want to get to it as soon as possible because it is 15 minutes and I don't want this video to run too long. And so this video is pretty amazing, so I want to get right to it. But first off on this channel, we talk about retirement, we talk about social security, and we talk about what's going on in Washington, DC. If that sounds like something interesting to you, please subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell notification. That way you get notified anytime we put out a video. And like always, if you see my name and a picture of me in the comment section, make sure you see a check mark next to my name. That check mark signifies that it's me. If you do not see that check mark, it's not me. It's someone trying to impersonate state me okay so like i said i want to get right over to this video and we'll start watching it. It, it, it it's amazing he's calling every u.s senator something that i probably should have done a long time ago uh but there are some roadblocks we're going to talk a little bit about I, I would like to do something similar to this but there are some roadblocks along the way and, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that but let's go ahead and get to the clip because i, I want to make sure we don't run this video too long so here we go I am a constituent, a voting member of the United States of America. There are some who call me Mr. Beat. About three months ago, I called every U.S. Senator in the country. And many of you watched. In fact, I asked many of you to share with me questions you'd like me to ask your U.S. Senator on your behalf. And yes, I did it live. We'll do it live! F*** it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! I live streamed it on YouTube, Twitch, and even Metaface. And this, you could say, eh, added to the drama a bit. Now when I say I called every US Senator in the country, what I really mean is I called a member of their staff. Sadly, I didn't get to actually talk to any US Senator during this. While it would have been really cool to actually call and have one of them pick up the phone and talk with me, I wasn't expecting that to actually happen. It's no surprise that senators depend heavily on their staffers. Each senator has dozens of staff members, many of them interns, who help senators analyze bills and policies, manage their offices, meet with the press, research, archive stuff, and most importantly, communicate with constituents. You know, constituents like you and me. In my opinion, these staffers are underpaid heroes. There are nearly 6,000 US Senate staffers and they all work their butts off. I later found out that most of the people I ended up talking to on the phone were in fact interns. So anyway, my goal was to call all their offices within six hours, 100 senators in six hours. Oh, in the office of the president of the Senate, the vice president, Kamala Harris. So 100 and one calls in six hours. No problem. Yeah, it took like way longer than that. In fact, it took me so long that I had to break it up into two parts. The whole thing took around 11 hours. To be fair, much of it was responding to your deep concerns about our federal government. You wanted your voice heard. You wanted your senators to hear all about the bills, laws, policies, and issues that were important to you. And while I brought up all kinds of important stuff to the Senate staffers, my default issue was election reform, which is really important to me. In particular, I brought up voting rights bills that I thought would help protect our representative form of democracy. Well, many Senate offices didn't even answer the phone. Of the 101 offices I called, 53 didn't pick up. So I left 53 voicemails. Sorry, I didn't get that. Please try again. Thank you for calling the Washington, D.C. office of Senator Richard Burr of North Carolina. Now, just think about that. He called 101 offices. 
only 50 or 53 didn't even pick up the phone. So just think about how crazy that is. You call 101 offices, 53 people don't even pick up the phone or 53 offices don't even pick up the phone. That is amazing to me. That is amazing that we are paying. Our tax dollars are going to these offices, going to these these politicians. And not only are they receiving money from us for their salaries, but they're also receiving money from us to run an office. And those offices aren't running because if they're not answering the phone, how can they represent the American people? How can they represent their constituents if they don't even pick up the phone? So I, I just find that really, really amazing. Uh, and, and we're gonna keep watching it because there's some other little surprises that come in but it, it, it's just sad. It really is. I mean, things need to get better when it comes to these politicians and representing uh, their constituents because that, 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 that's just ridiculous. You should not have to leave messages. They should be able to pick up the phone. If I call any uh, corporation right now, they're going to have someone that's going to pick up the phone in most situations. Okay. You might get a recording up front, but the, you can usually get to someone. You can usually talk to someone uh, as long as you're calling during business hours and things like that. But this is pretty ridiculous. The, the, that result right there just it was pretty shocking to me. It joins with a comment for Senator Burr about matters before the U.S. Senate or who wish to share their opinion. In every single voicemail I left, I briefly mentioned the bill, issue, or policy I wanted the senator to know about. Hello, this message is for Senator Burr, and I was wondering if Burr could please support um, either the bill from Senator Ossoff or the bill from Senator Hawley. Both bills are similar, but both ban stock trading by members of Congress. I think that's a good idea. I think most Republicans, Democrats, Independents all support a stock trading ban, as well as my contact information. Oh yeah, I also try to remember to thank them for their service. I look forward to your response, and thank you for your service. Sucking up never hurts after all. 48 staffers did answer. At first, I told staffers that their call was being recorded and they didn't like that too much. Uh, yes, sir. If you would like uh, to, to record, I'm happy to put you in touch with our press office. I'll just explain what I'm doing so you're not... No, free. sir. I just I would rather not... Be, be quoted, I'm not an official spokesperson for it. So I stopped telling them after that. By the way, the District of Columbia has a quote, one party consent law, which means it's not a crime to record a phone call as long as one party knows. Oh, I knew about it, all right. The vast majority of staff. <laughs> so I, lo I love Mr. Beats, his, his delivery. It's just, I mean, it's kind of dry, and it, but it, it's, it's funny. Very, very, <laughs> very amusing. Oh, okay, here we go. First I spoke to were both very nice and knowledgeable. And I'd be happy to ask that question on your behalf. Okay, I really appreciate that. Not a problem at all, Matt. Uh, hope you have a wonderful rest of your afternoon, all right? Okay, you too, thank you. Okay, some of them weren't so nice, but you know. Unfortunately, unfortunately, this line would only be for constituents of Illinois. Some of them even knew who I was. I'm calling on behalf of my uh, viewers from Arizona. You know me? Yes, I just saw that you had a video about record or calling all the senators. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes, this is this is a bit surreal. That's very cool. This is a weird question. Are you associated with the YouTube channel, Mr. Beat? <laughs> yes, I am actually. And knew that I was live streaming, so that was especially crazy. Uh, if you were a YouTuber, I think I have some friends that would be a big fan. Okay, you must know. You must know who's calling then, don't you? <laughs> uh, no, 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 I, I, I do not, but I will happily pass it along. <laughs> For some of them, it really felt like they weren't going to pass along my information. Yes, sir. All right, I will pass on your comments to Senator then. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good day. Many especially seemed to disengage from me once they realized I wasn't from the state the senator represented. Um, unfortunately, sir, we only send responses to uh, our constituents, but I'd be happy to flag um, that you've called and uh, pass that along to the senator. So now that it's been about three months, how many senators actually got back to me? Well, sadly, not many at all.
I did get added to some mailing lists. I now get newsletters from Kentucky Senator Rand Paul all the time. A shout out to his communications team. They are busy. I also get emails occasionally from Tennessee Senator Bill Haggerty and Minnesota Senator Tina Smith. I also somehow got on Representative Lauren Boebert's mailing list, and I'm pretty sure the Haggerty staffer was responsible for this. And hey, speaking of Senator Smith, she also emailed me a personal letter supporting my support for election reform, specifically referencing her disagreement with the Supreme Court in the case Shelby County v. Holder, and mentioning her co-sponsorship of the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. That said, it mostly felt like copy pasta. Like she or one of her staffers literally copied and pasted just about all of it from something else previously written. I got three other letters back from senators that also had a copy pasta feel to them. The offices of Ohio Senator Sherrod Brown, New Mexico Senator Martin Heinrich, and New Hampshire Senator Jean Shaheen all emailed me copy pasta letters. Senator Shaheen also supported my support for election reform form, specifically referencing her disagreement with the Supreme Court in the case Shelby County v. Holder and mentioning her co-sponsorship of the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. Wait, in fact, her email was a lot like Senator Smith's. Hmm. Senator Heinrich's email supported my support for Puerto Rico becoming a state, bringing up his introduction of the Puerto Rico Statehood Admission Act of 2021. Senator Brown's email was, uh, interesting. I had called him about ranked choice voting being a great alternative to plurality voting, and his email was mostly just an explainer about what ranked choice voting is. Thanks, Senator Brown! But I already made a video explaining it. Anyway, he didn't specifically support ranked choice voting in the letter, but instead said he vaguely supported it being easier to vote. That said, at least he ended the letter with, quote, Should legislation on ranked choice voting come to the Senate floor for consideration, I will be sure to keep your thoughts in mind. Thanks, dude. The next response I got was more impressive because it didn't feel like copy pasta. It felt more like an actual personal letter. It was from Oregon Senator Jeffrey Merkley, and this was his response to my voicemail regarding response to climate change. He began the letter with, Greetings, Mr. Beat. Thank you for your call, your interest in my work to fight climate chaos, and for encouraging your fellow citizens to engage with their government. And ended it with, Thank you again for contacting me and for helping educate your audience on YouTube about civics and about government engagement. All my best, Jeffrey A. Merkley, United States Senator. Thanks, Senator. That was really cool, man. But you're about to be outdone because there was only one Senator who sent me this. Mr. Bean, it's Cory Booker. I just watched your video of you calling my office. So three things real quick. One, thank you for acknowledging um, my team and they are an extraordinary group of people who just elevate the mission that we have for our office. And it's not just a policy mission, we also are big believers in ideals of kindness and leading with love. And that really is most evident in the small things, is how do you talk to people? How do you listen to people? How do you engage with them? And I'm really grateful that you saw that spirit uh, in my team. Number two, um, I agree with you. <laughs> Election day should be a federal holiday. Let me give you one example. I mean. The, the mere fact that people work on Tuesdays. Imagine being a single parent with a couple kids and having to get them to school, having to work your full-time job, having to pick them up, take them to games, all the demands on people's times, and then trying to fit in voting, and you find out it's an hour wait, two hour wait, three hour wait to vote, especially in low-income areas or disproportionately minority areas, we're seeing longer wait times, and so, we should have a federal holiday to encourage people to vote. And I believe we should go beyond just a voting day in America. We should have mail-in balloting and voting over a period of time to make sure that our electoral process is more inclusive, more equal in all their access. And finally, point number three, um, thank you for what you just modeled. Uh, I think that what you're doing by calling every single senator is you're showing people what activism is all about and in many ways how easy it is to engage with uh, your public officials. Uh, this idea that goes back to our founding of petitioning the government 
uh, that this is a democracy of we the people. Um, I just appreciate um, that leadership that you're showing, that light and instruction that you're showing as well. I wish you all the best. I hope I get a chance to meet you in, the, in person one day. Thank you. That was New Jersey Senator Cory Booker, and that was freaking amazing. I was particularly impressed because I know how busy senators are. They have a lot to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, and it was just neat that he took the time out to film that for me. And you. And Senator Booker's enthusiasm must be contagious because his staffer who I spoke with on the phone was also enthusiastic and receptive to my calls for electoral reform. Um, anything really, he's, he's in favor of pretty much anything that would, um, you know, really guarantee uh, citizens' right to vote. So. Um... I can absolutely pass it on to the senator for you. As cool as that was, in the three months since I called 101 Senate offices, I only got a total of six responses. Total. Just six. One of those who didn't get back to me was New Mexico Senator Ben Ray Lujan, and I totally understand why he didn't. The man had a stroke while I was literally doing the live streams, and I wish him the very best as he is still slowly recovering. But for the rest of you senators, I am disappointed in you. Let me be frank. This experience has been a total letdown and has made me question our representative democracy. Look. I get why senators can't make much time for their constituents. Many of them have a lot of constituents. Take California, for example. California has 40 million people. So I understand if senators can't respond to all of the calls and emails they get on a daily basis. Still, I know they make time for their campaign donors, and I know they make time for lobbyists who bribe them. So. Why can't they make time for us? To the six U.S. Senators who did respond to me, thank you. To the rest of you out there, you have some work to do. And in case you're wondering, I do plan on calling every member of the House of Representatives next. Stay tuned for that. It's going to take a while. All right, so that was Mr. B. Now, I I'm telling you, I, I, I like what he's doing. I really do. And I want to model it and, and, and do the same thing or do something very similar to it. Uh, but there are some roadblocks. Now, you saw that when he called or, or he kind of explained this, when he called certain Senate offices, they would not talk with him or take his, his question or his, his concern because he was not a constituent. So he wasn't in that state. And so that's a roadblock. And you're going to you're going to probably, you know, if I start calling people, calling politicians, I'm going to probably start getting those same roadblocks. And when it comes to the House of Representatives, same thing. It's going to be even more because now I have one representative in, in the city where I live. And so if I'm calling another area, another district, I'm not going to they might not want to uh, to reach out to me and, and respond. But. The, ultimately, what I think I'm going to do, and, and we'll, we'll have to work this out because I definitely want to do this. I think this is something that we should all be doing. And I, I've been talking about this for a very long time that you need to call your congressperson or write a letter. Uh, and that that is the way that we should be doing things. But you, you saw these senators, very few of them responded. I mean, out of 101 offices that he contacted, only six responded. And so that's very, very sad. We, we, I, I think we should have a movement, uh, maybe a, a YouTube movement of, of people contacting these, these Congress people and, and letting them know, Hey, look, this is ridiculous. If you represent us, you should be responding to, to our concerns. And so the way that I think the best way to, to handle this is to have people in these different areas. So if it's senators, have people in these different states and and take their concern. So me be the lobbyist for that person. And so if you're in a certain state and you have an issue that you want um, you want to get in front of that that senator, let me know. You can let me know in the comment section below. I'll also post my email here. Uh, but that's the best way to do it. And then once I get enough people that are, are that are coming from these different states, then I can start reaching out to some of these different. 
uh, di- different Congress people. But I love it. I love I love what he's doing and the response from Cory Booker. Now I've been watching Cory Booker for a while now. He he's uh, I, I I watched a documentary. I think it was two thousand four, two thousand five. It was called Street Fight, and Cory Booker was running for mayor in Newark, New Jersey, and. It was interesting. It was a very, very good documentary. And since then, I've been following him through his, his whole journey uh, to, to make it making it to the Senate. And it, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing that that he responded like that. And just think about this. Now, when you're younger, you're a little more tech savvy, right? So the, it, it, some of these 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 politicians, some of these senators, especially, they're very, very old. You know, they're in their 70s and 80s. And so they don't think of, of technology uh, like Cory Booker thinks of technology. Like I'm still of an age where, where technology, I, I see the, the benefit in that. A lot of these politicians don't even see the benefit in technology, but it doesn't take very long. In reality, it takes more time to write a letter than it does to do what he did, where he just pulled up his phone and start talking uh, to his phone. And then I'm sure he had an aide that put everything together and sent it to, uh, to Mr. Beat. But that's a good response. Like he's actually responding directly to Mr. Beat and 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 letting him know, hey, this is this is how I feel about these different things, and thank you for for uh, commending me on my my staff. And I, I mean, it, it it was it was perfect. That's exactly what politicians should be doing. They should be responding to their constituents, and if the, even if it's not their constituent, they should still be responding because that's that's their whole job. OK, when I pay, when we pay our taxes, our taxes are going to the federal government. And part of those taxes are going to these politicians in, in the form of a salary. And it's not one of those things where only the money coming from West Virginia, I'm just using West Virginia, but only the money coming from West Virginia is going to Senator Manchin. It's not a situation like that. All the money goes from all the different states, goes to the federal government, and then they they split it up and then you have people, the politicians receiving their salary and then the politicians also receiving money for their offices, okay? Millions of dollars they're receiving to run their office. And that's where I thought was really sad when you looked at 53 offices did not answer the phone, okay? Let alone respond. They didn't respond, but they didn't even answer the phone. That is just, that's just crazy to me. Where are our tax dollars going if we can't have someone answer the phone? I mean, that's the basic of all basics when it comes to representing someone. Answer the phone. Could you imagine if that was your attorney and you're paying your attorney and you call and they don't even answer the phone? So I want to know what you guys think about this. I I was really excited about it when I saw it. I wanted to post it as soon as possible. Uh, So let me know what you think about it and make sure you go over to Mr. Beat, go over to his channel, subscribe to his channel, hit his little bell notification. And he, like I said, he puts out some really good content, especially when you're when you're talking about political history. And I try to talk a little bit about different things when it comes to political history. He does a good job. I believe he is a professor. He's a professor now, or he was a professor. Uh, so he knows how to lay things out and explain everything to you. Because I think a lot of what's going on when people get frustrated in our government and they're getting frustrated and 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 things not moving fast enough and and things not moving at all when it comes to legislation, a lot of it is tied up into how our government works. And if we don't understand how our government works, if we think that the president's there and the president can do everything that he wants to do, that's not the way it works. We have a balance of government. And learning that, learning about how our government works will allow you to make more informed decisions. So when you look at the the Congress people, you can see, okay, you know what? The Congress people, they carry that purse. They have the money. So why aren't they doing anything? Should I just blame the president or should I blame them as well? And should I hold them accountable as well? You have a lot of politicians that, especially Congress people, that get away with not doing anything and they continue to get reelected. So anyway, I just wanted to put this video out. Hope you guys appreciate it. Please hit the like button on the way out. Please subscribe for more and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.